zero. Release and lift off. Launching on a mission to Mars, this is the start of NASA's most ambitious project to answer the age-old question, are we alone? It'll take the Perseverance rover almost seven months to reach the red planet, and if all goes well, place the car-sized robot safely in the Jezero crater. Once there, the rover will spend almost two years exploring an ancient Martian lake, a location scientists say may hold the building blocks to life. So one of the key steps that, that uh, Perseverance is taking is collecting samples that can be brought back to Earth in the future and then analyzed with all the terrestrial laboratories we have, which should actually provide us a definitive answer to that question. In a first in space exploration, the rover is equipped with an experimental helicopter called Ingenuity. It plans to make several hops above the planet's surface, something NASA say will be a Wright Brothers moment in space. Ingenuity helicopter on the Perseverance rover is one of the most exciting aspects of the mission because this will be the first time we demonstrate flight on another planet. And that's really important as an exploration tool. If all goes as planned, this will be NASA's ninth rover to land on Mars and so far the most sophisticated. Perseverance will carry out an experiment to try and generate oxygen out of the Martian atmosphere, drill for rock samples, and most importantly, look for signs of frozen microbial life. If you keep adding more rovers, you get incremental uh, increases in knowledge, but bringing those samples back, letting thousands of scientists and hundreds of laboratories look at them, that's where the big increase of knowledge is gonna come. Once the samples are collected, NASA plans to retrieve them by launching another mission to the Red Planet, before hopefully returning with them safely to Earth. What the mission delivers may answer the question, did Mars ever have life? Before any of that happens, Perseverance will have to land on Mars, a window of time NASA calls seven minutes of terror. That's how long it takes the rover to send a radio signal back to Earth. The Curiosity rover managed it in 2012, and if Perseverance does the same, it will begin a whole new era in the search for life. Andy Gallagher, Al Jazeera, Miami, Florida. Francisco Diego is a senior research fellow uh, in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at University College London. Joins me now from there. Good to have you with us always on the programme, Mr Diego. Uh, in pleasure. your opinion, what would you like to see uh, come out of this particular research project to Mars? Well, there are several things. Of course, the mission itself is very challenging. Uh, we just see the start of uh, several months and then the last uh, part of the mission, which is actually going into the into the atmosphere of Mars and then slowing down and finally soft landing on this particular place, which is a fantastic. Uh, I mean, when you see the images of this crater, all full of uh, marks made by water in the past, you see a delta river, and the crater was full of water because it's a reservoir. It has water coming in and water coming out. There is another canal coming out. And you can see the, the marks of this water that was flowing millions and millions of years ago. And then, of course, as we just uh, heard now, when there is water for a long period of time, there is a high, high possibility of very primitive life. And this is exactly what this uh, rover is going to try to find, some, some kind of evidence for that uh, life in the past. It is a, a technological nightmare to get expeditions like this off the ground. Um, so how have previous expeditions to Mars prepared the Americans for this particular adventure? Well, it has been mainly uh, United States uh, missions. We have uh, the Viking uh, landers in the 70s, and then we have, in the 90s, we have the, uh, the Sojourney rover, and then we have the Curiosity and Spirit, the, the uh, Spirit and Opportunity rovers, and finally the Curiosity, Curiosity rover. We have the Phoenix lander. We have a lot of uh, uh, machines that have landed, and the rovers especially, especially useful, because they can, they can look around for, uh, for special things. So it's a very uh, long sequence that has taken decades to come to this point. And the Perseverance rover is just an upgraded version of the Curiosity rover that was launched. That was the last one that was launched a few years ago. And it has an enhanced uh, uh, set of equipment, of uh, instruments. And as we just saw now, it has a helicopter that is going to sell a rover that is going to to uh, prove that uh, uh, even that the atmosphere of Mars is 100 times thinner than here on Earth, you can still have a helicopter with high speed, high speed uh, propellers 
to really hover and then explore the planet with cameras, essentially, in a much more efficient way. Uh, it's no holiday for NASA to do this. If resources are found in the long term, what do you expect the Americans will do with this information? For example, there's always talk about mining operations or the habitation of the planet. Is that realistic? Is it a real possibility? Well, of course it is, but it's not as uh, long as a short term as we think. Um, we, uh, we expect that the first humans will be walking on Mars in more than 10 years to come. And uh, there is a long way to go before we can establish a colony on Mars. And uh, we certainly will establish a colony on the moon much earlier than that. And that will be a very, very uh, helpful experience to learn how to live and settle in another celestial body. But to, to, to colonize Mars is going to take a long time. And I must say, as I normally say in these interviews, that I hope that by then we will go as humanity, not as a single nation, not as a single company. It will not be competition, it will be collaboration. And I hope that will be the case because, because the, the, the challenges are enormous and it's better to face the challenges. We should be challenging the challenge of this pandemic thing as a humanity putting all, all the efforts together to get a vaccine. Well, we put all the efforts together to go and colonize the moon and colonize Mars. I, that's what I would like to see out of all these, uh, all these uh, missions. But for the, for the moment, a robotic mission like this one is going to be fantastic. If they can detect uh, microscopic uh, and kind of or vestigious uh, or, or chemical evidence or, or kind of evidence of, of fossil bacteria, on Mars, that would be fantastic. Uh, of course, you know, getting to Mars it, it, it is another thing. I mean, there are lots of, uh, you might say, hurdles along the way, space debris, asteroids. What are the most dangerous parts of the trip for uh, this, uh, this expedition? Because obviously it needs a very specific trajectory to get to Mars and to land in, in, on Mars and to be able then to get the uh, information required. It's all precision uh, timing, isn't it? Well, it is precision to start with because now you have to be very careful. It's like playing football. I mean, you launch your, your pass to your receiver and then you have to launch the pass exactly where the receiver is going to be. There are, you can adjust the trajectories as you go, but you have to launch the, from the beginning. It has to go in the right direction, which is what is happening right now. But um, we're talking about uh, human missions to Mars, is not any, any better. I mean, of course, human missions can be more controllable. They are not so robotic, so you have humans on board, you have proper ways of, of uh, dealing with contingencies. But still, you are stuck there in a small spaceship with several people for seven or nine months. There is no way around it yeah. yet to that. And that is a major thing. That's, that confinement okay. is a major thing with the radiation that comes as well, because they will be subject to radiation from, from space that still has to be uh, found a way to mitigate that technologically. OK, well, we'll see what does happen. Francisco Diego, always good to speak to you, sir. Thanks for joining us from London. It's a pleasure.